If you're a fan of old school bodybuilding, then make sure to check out Subs the Movie. Filmmaker Alex Ardenti explores the $40 billion sports supplement industry, delving into the origins, evolution, and current state of supplements used by millions of fitness enthusiasts worldwide, available at Amazon and Vimeo. Hi everybody, Golden Era Bookworm here, and today we start with a new set of interviews with Jerry Brainham, and today we begin with a natural bodybuilding masterclass, and specifically in this video, Jerry details how to get really big naturally. Unknown to most, Jerry Brainham was a natural bodybuilder that was able to compete at over 200 pounds and won several competitions as a natural bodybuilder. In his interview, Jerry details the best bodybuilding routines and techniques for gaining massive size for natural bodybuilders. Enjoy. So last time we had a great conversation. Uh, it, it was just, uh, I mean, I don't know if you've been watching my channel, but it generated so much interest our interviews a lot of the fans were saying oh this is like the best collaboration ever and <laughs> things like that cool. really uh yeah. i had a from our almost two hour conversation I had to split it up into several videos yeah, I, saw, I saw them all yeah i saw yeah them. oh great yeah, I, so saw, yeah, there's a... I saw the comments too they were very favorable most of them yeah, <laughs> yeah. yes um so i thought um seeing that i only went through a very small amount of the questions that I actually had for you. We continue today from where we left off. Pretty sure. Now I've seen your, your um, images that you mentioned uh, comp competing during the golden years. And thanks for sending those photos, by the way. Um, uh, th those, those, especially that one photo where you got that side tricep shot. Yeah. Um, was that natural? Were you yeah. natural the whole time? I was, uh, in that photo, I was, uh, let me think, I was 16 years old and I was totally natural. Yeah, I was natural. My arms were a lot bigger in those days. <laughs> yeah, of course. So they, they've, yeah. Atrophied, they've atrophied down to nothing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, what about like the, um, I mean, there's that image as well of you a lot older with your mustache and all. Yeah. Oh, the, Have you uh, always been natural? Were you always natural? Always, na always natural. Always right. natural. I never took any drugs at all other than asthma drugs because I have asthma. Mm -hmm. So I've had to use that uh, to control the uh, disease, but I never used any anabolic drugs as a bodybuilding competitor. N not one. Excellent. Not, nothing. How big were you in that photo? Which one? The, uh, the, the one that's on the beach there? The, uh, I wait. I was uh, I was just under six foot, and I was two hundred and ten pounds in that photo. Yeah, I mean, you you look massive there and cut. Yeah, yeah, I always tell people that if I would have taken drugs, I estimate the way considering the 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 way I trained and the amount of strength I had back then, with nothing, with no drugs, and seeing as how other guys responded to drugs, I estimated that with even just a basic anabolic steroid program. I probably could have competed uh, at close to Arnold's weight, which is about yeah. 230 to 235. Yeah, I think Believe you'd that. be right. And I, I would have looked a lot bigger, you know, yeah. and probably even harder because they also contribute to body composition. So, so I, but I don't regret not taking the drugs. I, I you know, I, I, I wanted to stay natural. I got into bodybuilding, not so much to compete. I got, I started lifting weights when I was 11. Uh, I wanted to, I, I wanted to be healthy. It's a strange thing, an 11 year old kid being concerned with health, but I don't know. I had this idea that if, uh, in my, in my, uh, mind, I believe that if you, uh, lift weights and, you know, get, get involved in regular exercise, it'll increase your health and let, let you live longer. And mm -hmm. when I look back, that seems like a crazy concern for an 11 year old kid. Most of them don't think about that, but you know, I, I just drifted into body after a while. You know, when you start working out, you get enthusiastic. I started with three days a week, and then I went to four and five and six. When I was getting to six days a week, that's when I started to uh, get into bodybuilding competition, which was around, uh, first one was about 15 years of age. Yeah, in New York, back in New York. Awesome. Um, yeah, I mean, I think you're right about your estimation. I think off season, you would have easily bulked up to 250 yeah without a doubt well the funny thing is <laughs> even without drugs 
I, I've, I've actually, I, I think I've got up to 285 at one time. And I'm not going to say, <laughs> yeah, I, I wasn't muscular, you know, uh, I wasn't obese, I, but I, I wasn't, certainly wasn't defined. I wasn't cut, but I was extremely big. I mean, you know, I mean, mm -hmm. I was huge. I mean, I, I stood next to some of the top bodybuilders like Samir Benut about that, you know, around that time. They looked tiny next to me. I mean, I was much bigger mm -hmm. than them at that weight. <laughs> Can you imagine? I mean, with your height. <laughs> yeah, very strong too. I mean, I was a little. I, I was, geez, if I tried to push those weights today, I'd be in the hospital. I was looking some. <laughs> I was doing like six hundred pound squats, crazy stuff, you know. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Um, speaking of which, um, I mean, there's a lot of golden era bodybuilders that are still quite popular on social media. There's very few that stayed natural like you. Mm -hmm. um on that note how how would you how did you train to get that big to get you know 210 with at least you know probably eight percent body fat six percent yeah. body fat in that photo how did yeah. you train to get that big uh and your nutrition can you can you go through that seeing that you never took steroids you naturally your whole life i basically was very progressive that was the key uh i kind of studied the science of bodybuilding that was available at the time. Mm -hmm. It wasn't a lot, but uh, I, I studied and basically taught myself. And I, I, did, I realized that the whole basis of weight training as far as muscular hyper, hypertrophy or muscular growth involves what they call progressive resistance with an overload. In other, in other words, yep. you have to uh, gradually try and increase weight all the time. You always have to be very progressive and I was able to do that. Uh, I, I actually was the most progressive was when I used a high intensity training system around 1970, 71. <clears throat> a guy named Arthur Jones introduced the Nautilus machines in, in the United States. And he introduced a type of high, intens high intensity training system that involved very low volume, only like one or two sets per exercise, three whole body workouts a week that took about maybe 25 to 30 minutes to complete the whole workout. Because again, you didn't do many sets but it was extremely progressive. I literally added weight or reps every time I worked out. And I did this for, oh, it must've been about nine months. So I just zip, zip, zip straight up. I just, in fact, the guys at Gold's Gym where I was training, they insisted I was taking drugs because I kept gaining so much. Mm. But I was training like, nobody trained like me. I was going, to, I mean, not in that I was going literally to failure. I got up to where I was doing, you know, barbell curls, Fairly strict form, not not totally strict, with 185 pounds, which is a pretty good weight. Oh yeah. And you know, I've seen some recent studies, and I've written about them in my Applied Metabolics newsletter, where they say that there is no direct correlation between strength and muscle size. Meaning, you can get large muscles without necessarily lifting heavy weights, and they've proven that. Now, you know, if you do, for example, uh, weights equal to maybe 35 to 40 percent of maximum one rep and you do 25 to 30 reps to failure, it has to be to failure, the studies show you can get an equal amount of muscle size compared to doing 90% of one rep, which is a very heavy weight. Now, uh, I can only say, speak for myself, that my muscle size directly correlated with muscle strength, meaning mm -hmm. the stronger I got, the bigger I got. They're saying that, you know, but then again, the, the newest studies show that if you do lift heavy weights, I'm talking not necessarily 90%, let's say 80% of one rep, which is pretty heavy, that you can only do maybe six reps per set. Yeah. You're, you're work, you don't have to go to failure because you're, mm -hmm. if you lift weights that heavy, you're working all the muscle fibers that are amenable to growth, including what they call the type 2A fibers. Uh, I'm sorry, type 2X fibers. Those are the fibers most amenable. Those are the ones that really grow. And they're affected automatically when you lift heavy weights. To okay. get those fibers with lighter weight, you'd have to go to failure. See? Yeah. Now, when I lift the heavy weights, I, as I said, I, I did go to failure on the high intensity training, but I did very low volume. And the amount of recuperation I got, which is training only three times a week, allowed my muscles to grow. And of course, I, I was on a high protein diet. I mm -hmm. did everything right. And my body, and I was only, let's face it, I was only 21, 22 years of age. So I was at the I wasn't I was at the peak of uh, muscle strength, yeah. so I responded very well. But even when I didn't do the high intensity, 
uh, uh, I, for example, that picture that you uh, that you mentioned earlier, I wasn't on high. I was on a regular training system. But again, my system back then was the old. It was that was what they call the golden age. We used to do what's called bulking up. In the old mm -hmm. season, you, and that's what I, that explains why I got up to 285 pounds, because you would eat a lot more food, and you would use because you'd gain weight, you'd be able, you'd somehow get stronger and without any drugs, and you took mm -hmm. advantage of that by lifting heavy, and mm -hmm. the idea was to build as much muscle as possible in the off season with this heavy heavy weight training overload, and mm -hmm. then let's say th three months, depending on how much body fat you put on. In my case, it took about three months of dieting to get in contest shape. Uh, you would go on a diet, you would reduce the excess fat in the hope that you would retain a large percentage of the muscle size you gained from lifting very heavy weights yep. in the, uh, uh, during the bulking up thing. Then that was my system back then. I'd bulk up most of the year, and then I would, uh, three, like I say, sometimes if I put on too much fat, I would give myself as much as six months to prepare for a contest. So that was Jerry Brainham on the most effective routines and techniques for natural bodybuilders looking at gaining massive size. It is no surprise that Jerry recommends working on strength and increasing the amount of reps, which together is called the double progression method long used by silver era bodybuilders, and which I also advocate a lot on this channel, and of course which I use myself and program for my own clients. Interestingly, I was unaware that Jerry also used HIT, high intensity training, which advocates advanced principles like pre exhaustion and training to complete muscular failure, and was promoted, of course, by Arthur Jones and Mike Mensa. And Jerry claims that he was growing so fast on this program, steroid like growth, in fact, that everyone in the gym was sure that he was taking steroids. I was not surprised, however, to note that Jerry used this technique later on during his bodybuilding career, well after he had already trained trained in the standard high volume bodybuilding method, training four, five, and even up to six days a week. It is similar to other bodybuilders that have incorporated HIT in that it was incorporated later on in their careers. As in my own personal view, I believe that HIT is a rather advanced bodybuilding technique and works well with advanced bodybuilders. On the topic of training to failure, Jerry also pointed to the recent studies that prove that training to failure can be beneficial in stimulating muscle growth as much as training for strength, and the reason being that similar muscle fibers are recruited in such extreme workouts. In summary, science has shown that training for strength with heavy weights or training with lighter weights to complete muscular failure can both stimulate muscle growth because of the intramuscular effects being so similar, and at the end of the day, it's the muscular stimulation that leads to muscle growth. This also explains why, for so many years, two camps have existed warring over who is right, lightweight or heavyweight, and it happens to be that both methods lead to muscular growth. On this note, it is important to point out that Jerry is in the opinion that strength does seem to be proportional to muscle growth, especially when both strength and hypertrophy workouts are combined. The best of both worlds, so to speak, and I happen to agree with Jerry too. It makes perfect sense to me, and this is also another technique that I personally incorporate and teach my own clients. Just good old fashioned golden era bodybuilding principles. One final technique that Jerry did mention was the old-fashioned bulking and cutting technique, which worked well for him and many others during the golden era. I do believe it works well, although many trainers and channels out there will probably crucify me for saying so. But when you see the transformations of Bruce Randall and Steve Davis, it is easy to see why it works so well. The key which Jerry touched on is to develop strength with increased bulk. Only then does the bulk and cut program work. The reason why it works is said to be because of the increase in fat tissue, which acts as connective tissue which stabilizes joints and one structure, allowing one to lift heavier weight. With rapid increasing poundages in one's exercises, hypertrophy naturally follows and is displayed once a cutting program is practiced. I wouldn't say it is the healthiest method for a natural, however, or the most effective, but it can be effective if done correctly. So I do hope you have enjoyed watching this natural bodybuilding masterclass on Jerry's favorite bodybuilding routines for getting big naturally. 
If you have enjoyed watching the video, please give the video a like, subscribe to this channel and to Jerry's as well too for uh, more content like this and click the bell button to be notified of future videos and don't forget to leave your comments in the comment section. Also make sure to subscribe to the Applied Metabolics newsletter by Jerry Branham if you do wish to enhance your knowledge on bodybuilding nutrition, especially as a natural bodybuilder. More information is given in the description below. If you're interested in learning more about the double progression system, hit me up for online coaching or check out my website for Silver Era eBooks on the matter. And for HIT eBooks, check out my Mike Mensah series at www.goldenerabookroom.com. That's it from me. This is the Golden Era Bookworm saying bye for now. Online training is now available, including my new program, Novice to Classic, a program geared towards beginners and novices looking at developing a classic physique, as well as Classic Cut, geared at those who wish to lose weight and gain muscle fast. Details available at www.goldenerabooking.com. Need a bodybuilding poster for your gym or office? Then check out ironmanmagazinearchive.smugmug.com for the highest quality posters on the planet. Scroll through the galleries of all the legends, including greats such as Arnold, Frank Zane, Sergio Oliva, Serge Nubre, Tom Platz, and Larry Scott, and much, much more, and select your poster now. Your favorite YouTube channel, please visit teespring.com slash store slash golden era bookworm for merchandise, including t-shirts, hoodies, face masks, phone cases, and much, much more. Once again, at teespring.com slash store slash golden era bookworm. Become a patron at www.patreon.com forward slash golden era bookworm for hard to find books, scans of rare photos and articles on the golden era of bodybuilding. To take full advantage of my collaborations, use code GEB20 with nspnutrition.com and vincegeronda.com as well as code bookworm12 at osl.com for a discount at checkout. I don't think that Bill Phillips looked at it as I want to compete against them. I want to destroy them. If they pass legislation basically making any type of food supplement a prescription item, that would be the end, the death of the entire food supplement industry. In the 1960s, the sports supplement industry was barely emerging. I think the reason why Joe Weider was so successful was he had Arnold on his side. He wasn't selling supplements. He was in the dream business. Joe Weider was a marketing genius. People would say the promotions or the endorsements back then were cheesy. To me, it wasn't. I loved it. Fitness was taking off. You know, fitness became cool. You had a lot of readers that wanted to be like the stars that they idolized. Bill's strength is his marketing savvy. He's a marketing genius. Got it, got it. It's only vitamin. The right of American citizens to have free access to dietary supplements of their choice. Consult your physician, you might as well consult the next guy you meet on the street. They don't know a damn thing about vitamins and nutrition. The dietary supplement industry became the number two most regulated industry. Nuclear, dietary supplements, pharmaceutical. We are more regulated than drugs. They come in and you uh, need to allow the FDA. They have jurisdiction. The enforcement is kind of the questionable side of it and how do they really get a handle on this monster? A lot of people tell me that the dietary supplement industry is completely unregulated. It's the wild, wild west out there. It's a free for all. That could not be further from the truth. A dietary supplement is not allowed to have a side effect. I always say the pharmaceutical has to have a minimum of 100 side effects in order for it to be a drug. And now, it's a $40 billion industry and growing. That's the really interesting thing, is the cast of characters from the 80s, when it was kind of iffy, to now, when it's a lot more legitimate. They made it sound cutting edge, revolutionary, and different, and I want that. That's cool. We are in this industry to improve our health. It's not just a vanity project here. We're working on our lifeline. We eat a certain way to improve our health. We train a certain way to improve our health. Supplements are just that. They supplement your work, your graft, your nutrition. Uh, they demonize dietary supplements, but they say all you need is real food. Well, what's a real food? They pump you up and get you hard, stronger, faster, bigger. Doc, I want to take this weight gain. I want to take this pre-workout. No, no way. I, that stuff, we don't know what's in that. It could be, no way. I'm not going to give you, it's going to kill the industry, bottom line. 
So I must have drank so much protein powder from age 15 to 18 that my head was gonna explode. <laughs> I believed in metrics so much that I would probably punch somebody in the face if they tried to take it away from me.